All right, so I guess I'll call the um, meeting to uh, order. And if everyone would please uh, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Okay. So, um, starting off, uh, the first thing is public comments. So, Nick, I'm going to let you describe the process again for folks. And, uh, and then we'll talk about if there's any changes. And then hopefully by then, if there's comments, they've had time to submit them. Okay? Yeah, of course. So go ahead. Yeah, so um, for anybody who hasn't uh, done this new kind of Zoom meeting process before, uh, there are a few ways in which you can get a public comment into us. Um, it seems like the most common way that people have been uh, submitting would be the Zoom group chat feature. Uh, and the best way to do that would be to, you know, just go in the chat. Uh, if you could just put your uh, name and uh, your residence, I'd greatly appreciate that. And then the message, and we'll uh, read it into the record. Um, the uh, other ways to do it would be to uh, text uh, my cell phone number, which I am going to put in the chat. It's 603-933-0973. Uh, Again, same thing as chat. Please uh, give me your first last name, uh, town of residence, and message, and I'll read it into the record. Third way is through the participants tab. You do have the ability to uh, raise your hand, and through doing that, you can, uh, you know, raise your hand. I can acknowledge you, and then you can have the ability to, uh, you know, speak. And then again, uh, first last name, town of residence, and message. All right. Thank you. Um, so changes to the agenda. Does anyone have any changes? Nope. Just for the consent agenda when we get there. Okay, so when we get to the consent agenda, we'll um, address that. Um, just so everyone knows, I'm operating from an iPad tonight, so I do not have visuals. So I'm going to have to be calling people's names a lot. So, you know, if you raise your hand, I'm not gonna see you. Um, so I'll just check in with everyone as we go through. And I'm sorry for the added time that that does and kind of slows the pace and awkwardness of it all. Um, okay, so there's no changes to the agenda except for consent when we get there. Um, have we gotten any public comments? I have not yet received anything. Okay. All right, um, well, there'll be another opportunity if people do have it, so let's move on. And um, Ruben, with superintendent's report, please. All right, well, certainly for those who are here, you can go online and read the superintendent's report. Uh, I'll add a little bit of extra to that. Um, this school year is winding down. The last day of school for students is Friday, May 29th, but we're not too far away from that. Uh, many schools in the area are doing the exact same thing, some going a little bit longer. There are some schools actually who are out already in the state of New Hampshire. Um, end of year activities are being planned and communicated school by school. Uh, last week, the middle school and the high school did, um, what I guess what we call a parade, but it was a caravan of cheer and community members, police, fire, buses, teachers, support staff, um, went around for several hours and, and the idea was to bring cheer. And the person who spearheaded this really was Laura Harding. Her idea felt she's a sixth grade teacher in the school and did a lot of the planning. Uh, once we heard about that, uh, we had certainly had heard that uh, some elementary teachers had wanted to do something of a similar nature earlier on, maybe a month ago or so. So we felt it would be a good idea to do district-wide. And so Heather Lindstad uh, helped make that take place. On Friday, we were supposed to have the, on the 15th, the elementary schools, both in Ringe and Jaffrey, were going to do it as well. 
uh, because of the forecast that we were supposed to have uh, terrible weather, and we certainly did. It just happened a little bit later than we had thought. That was canceled, but it is rescheduled for this coming Friday, the 22nd. So that should be a good time. And I know that the kids will be excited. Uh, also, end of the year uh, activities, uh, graduation is on everyone's mind. While uh, the details of that are still being ironed out, uh, I have enough information that's been given to me that the goal after many uh, meetings online, um, Brett and his administration with parents, with some students, that they are very confident that an in-person event um, can take place and that that would happen in July. Uh, more information on that will be sent out by the high school administration um, the, either tomorrow or the next day. I know that Brett communicated in general that that was going to be the case. Um, the location that they're looking at right now is the airport, The because um, it has the space for the parking and the social distancing and so forth. There's a lot that has to go into this, a lot of planning. Um, there has to be permits, a lot of things that have to fall into place, but we have the time to do that. And so um, we will have individuals working on that to make sure that that can become a reality. And we really just want to thank, I know Brett wants to thank uh, everyone for patience and for providing um, the input for actually traveling to different places to talk to different people. Uh, again, this was a community effort. It was, there were, there were a variety, and it will continue to be a community effort, but there were a variety of people in, in that process that helped make the decision making go that direction. Uh, from a school and kind of a, a movement standpoint within curriculum instruction assessment, it's you know, certainly no surprise that this has been um, a time of um, different instruction, different learning opportunities, remote learning. Uh, some of it has been very good. Some of the learning that we've had has been tremendous and we can, uh, our goal right now is uh, one, to hope that things will in the fall look uh, certainly differently than they do right now, but also not to forget the lessons learned during this time frame of personalization, of how to uh, leverage technology within our day-to-day -day operations even better than what we've been doing in the past. It's in our strategic design to do this. And so this summer we'll be putting that multi-year Str uh, strategic plan together so that is uh, we can communicate very effectively what all the next steps are having for the uh, years to come. You know, one of those planning pieces that we've communicated for, you know, a couple years now is the implementation of a learning management system. While we do not intend to implement a learning management system next year, we certainly do plan on having one purchased over the summertime. It's being researched right now by a group of teachers um, to uh, have our teachers basically uh, spend a good year of, uh, I guess you could say playing in the sandbox, playing with the device so that they, or the uh, software so that they really understand it inside and out. So that by the time implementation, implementation does occur over a couple year period of time within the grade levels, that it will, uh, we will have well communicated it, that our teachers will uh, understand the technology very well, we'll use it properly, and so it will be received, I think, very, very well. It is, a learning management system is something that is highly suggested, whether we were going to customize, personalize learning or not. Uh, it's the, it's the kind of the backbone, the technological backbone that uh, the S Department of Education right now is really asking us to implement anyway. Uh, so that things like remote learning or anything that you know could happen again like like this uh, would have a smoother transition. So again, it's not something that we're being forced to do. It's something that we had planned on doing all along. I'm glad that it's what you know our current situation is falling in line with a lot of what we had already talked about. 
uh, the group of individuals that will be really spearheading this effort of, of research. And there are very specific programs. You don't have to research them all, even though I have a, um, a shared Google Doc going on right now with about 10 or 12 different programs. Really, there are about three that are of significant value. And so they're being vetted. We're going to have a lot of conversation. And the purchasing process, I said during the budget season that we weren't going to purchase it through district funds. Uh, we have uh, E-rate money that we have set aside uh, in a tune of between fifteen and 20000 to be able to use to implement. It doesn't cost that much every single year of membership, but anytime you have to implement something and get things started up, it costs a little bit extra. So, um, I think the only other thing I want to report on right now uh, is that just that the Leadership Academy which has gone on this year. The first three courses went very well. We had 30, in some cases, uh, for a one, or, one or two classes, we had 31 or 32 um, individuals who were going through that process. Uh, they have two more courses this summer. One has already started, that's a technology and the classroom course, and certainly that's taking a whole new life. Uh, and that's taught by a curriculum and technology director in Massachusetts. I'm excited. Mike, Mike is his name. And then we have another course that we're being offered. Our former curriculum director actually is teaching that course. She works for Keene State and it's curriculum and assessment. And so mo both of those courses will be almost entirely online to work with the schedules of the teachers uh, in our current situation, of course. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Uh, Mar Mar Marcy, is this okay time to jump in? Do you want to go through? Yeah, no, I was going to say, if you have any questions about the written report or what he's verbally reported on, now's the time. Okay, very good. Ruben, I just wanted to follow up on a couple of items that it could be you um, will discuss under item seven, but I just wanted to make sure, and it's about the... Uh, hotspots and the Chromebooks uh, and whether they'll be available for student use during the summer. Mm -hmm. Sure, so there is a process for getting that, that will be sent out the, the principals and the building leaders and the technology director would like to have those Chromebooks returned um, to the school for cleaning up for inventory purposes and so forth. Uh, really any of the summer programming items that would need be needed for uh, tutoring in the elementary school or anything like that, we would need to redistribute Chromebooks. Uh, we can, at anyone, any, any student's desire to use one, um, we, can, they, you know, we can schedule a pickup process. We currently don't have hotspots. We've talked about that and we'll talk about that a little bit further. Um, we looked into hotspots earlier this year and specifically in Ringe, it, it was, um, not something that was going to end up being very practical or reliable uh, because of the service. Areas of Jaffrey, that's true as well, but, uh, and there was a time where there weren't hotspots available. So we could certainly look uh, toward that to see if we can get some hotspots for the um, area of Jaffrey and any, any area in Rinish that would you know, work. Verizon is who we'd go through. So we're up to their data and we're, right at the mercy of their data, I should say. Right, so I think um, also John, sorry, I'm just jumping in here for a second. Um, we had gotten a, a, a letter from uh, the Jaffrey Library asking that question, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Right, um, and I know Ruben, you and I had spoke about that and I thought you said you were gonna have someone uh, send her an email or give her a call and just kind of update her on that. So if that hasn't happened, maybe we just need to do that so she can make her decisions. Sure. Thanks. Yep. There, I mean, there were, I'll, I'll update her where we're at. There are a couple yeah. more decisions about the hotspot right now. It, those were being looked into. Yep. That's great. Yeah. So, we can't tell her any more than what we know. Mar Marcia, if I understand then, it sounds like it, uh, the Chromebooks will not be, that they will be collected, but that there will be a process for students to request them uh, to be re returned to them if, if they have a need. Is that 
a fair way to put it? That's a fair way to put it. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and certainly, be, and certainly because the elementary schools, their PEP approach is going to be uh, almost entirely remote. Uh, that and it's going to be a tutoring process. It won't be big group activities. Um, they're going to need those devices. Okay. Well, Ruben, food. Is there any thought on whether there'll be any food distributions during the summertime? So I just got an email today to uh, update us on some of that. Uh, first, we will continue our current process through the month of June, uh, all the way through. Come July and August, uh, we typically connect with Conval with their food distribution. And in the past, they have brought food here and then we've kind of done our thing. Uh, the email I got today was saying that everything would need to be picked up there. So uh, in, my, in my conversations with Carrie Broderick, the, uh, the business administrator, we, we've just started to have conversations about what it would look like, who's going to go over there and get it, all, all of that sort of thing. So uh, the plan, of course, is to be able to provide uh, whatever supports we can. We just have to do things a little bit differently, clearly, this summer than we have in the past. Right. Ruben, when you say to still provide, would it look the same as it looks now or how it has in the past in the summer, which I'm not sure how many days you were distributing? Sure, sure. Um, I actually need to find out all the processes from the prior summers as well myself. Um, as again, I've, I've just started asking those questions like what, what are we typically doing? Um, I knew we, we connected with the program over in Conval during the summer months and we still can. Um, so what it would look like, you know, relative to the food distribution, uh, that uh, I haven't had conversations with a bus company yet about that. I haven't had conversations with even how we're going to go over and get it and what that will look like. Um, but that's definitely on one of the next things we need to figure out. Okay, thank, thank you, Ruben. I know that there are some other groups I, I, who I think are asking themselves whether they can do anything. And of course, they don't want to duplicate what we're doing. So that's why you know, there's some interest in trying to work that out or figure that out. Well, I know we have to make some decisions very quickly within the next couple of days um, you know, with Conval. So we'll definitely have that information sooner than later. Right. And I, and I can communicate that to the board. All right, so are there any other questions for Ruben about either the written or verbal report? Yes. Um, about the LMS committee, Ruben? Yes. Who is on it, please? The LMS committee will be the individuals who are going to be on the curriculum instruction assessment group. Um, currently, right now, we have seven individuals. There will be some principals that will overlook it as well, um, or assistant principals administration. And those individuals are um, the three who are spearheading it we have heather shulman uh dana jackson heather shulman is actually the one starting the whole process uh caitlin mclaughlin from ringe uh, other people who are going to be working on that would be amanda dibble uh, at the high school um also uh, bridget wold at jgs and uh, wanda meager uh, who's the technology Check. person but also elementary person so I think uh, also Trish, Trish Layfield is on that committee. Uh, and some of these individuals need to still connect with me as to um, how much they want to be involved in that particular process. But those are the individuals. And have, have you already designated criteria for what you absolutely you know, like the, the must-haves and the wanna-haves and the don't-needs in terms of software performance and... Yeah, well, right now we're in the process of developing that criteria as a, as a group of individuals. There are certainly these programs give you exactly what it is they, you know, they do. And so we're looking at something that's going to be reliable with our current curriculum structure. That's a, that's a necessity. We certainly want to be able to um, add our own content to whatever system we have. 
Uh, a couple, several systems have their own content. That's, a, that's an added perk, that's not necessary. We want to be able to make certain that we are going to be able to report from the system. I think the main thing that we want, uh, in addition to all of those, is for it to function properly. Uh, when we're, we have some other schools that we're going to be calling um, that have uh, experienced a lot of these different programs, some of them in New Hampshire, some of them not. And, uh, you know, we have a school that in New Hampshire that, for instance, uh, has dealt with one program and it's working fantastically for them. And we have another one who is, I've just, I got an email today from someone saying that it has been horrible for them. Uh, so, and they're looking to change their LMSs. So, um, we have some work to do. Okay. So, um, I would, I guess, be interested in seeing the steps developed and publishing the criteria and just um, informing the board of the process. Uh, it, it's, you know, the initial investment is not huge, but it's something that is going to be a huge investment in time and effort and that the district will have to live with for a number of years. Oh, yes. Yep. So Absolutely. It's, um, that's a good if, point. If we don't get it purchased by the start of school, maybe that's not the worst thing. Better to make sure we are, you're going after the right product. Um, may I jump in? Go ahead, John. Sorry, I feel like I'm uh, jumping in too much. I apologize. Ruben, I, I noted you made some reference to a board uh, admin planning session for early summertime. So maybe that's an opportunity for us to, 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 to look at that, Ruben. I mean, to look at that, Laurel, and talk a little bit more about these learning management system options. Sure. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, I just, um, Patty or Alicia, Heidi, Charlie, any questions for Ruben? No, thanks. No. Okay. Just that I, I think that it's really hard to keep this kind of thing front and center with everything else swirling around. And I, I <laughs> applaud the administration, all of the different people who are working together to keep some momentum going forward with this. I think it's a really good illustration to our students um, about habits of mind and staying focused and persistent. So thanks. Here, okay. Here. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess we're done with superintendent's report and we're ready for the students. Let, let me just uh, unmute. Are they me here? Me. Uh, when I last checked, they were. They were. Patrick's here. Oh, Antonio's here. So I see Patrick. Patrick's being unmuted. Uh, Hi, Patrick. I honestly, unless you guys have any questions for me, I really don't have anything to report tonight. Because I was going to report on graduation and stuff, but that was already talked about. You might have more information than yeah. I than I uh, provide. I, I honestly don't because I missed the last meeting due to work. Oh. So, okay. well, how about uh, an opinion? Opinion? I was excited for the video thing where they were going to come <laughs> to my house. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I wrote a script out for my. Uh, like, oh yeah. wow! I was ready, but now I'm gonna have a joke at the actual graduation where I'm gonna bring a bottle of Windex with me and I'm gonna spray anyone who gets within six feet of me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Those are uh, clean jokes, I well, think. <laughs> huh, Patrick? Clean jokes? <laughs> yeah, they're clean instead of dirty. Yep. <laughs> oh my! Thank you for that. No problem. Uh, and does Antonio I, have anything to add? I do not. At no opinion? What? No, I'm not going to graduation, so. Well, you still don't have an opinion on it? Uh, I don't, I don't recommend a <laughs> gathering like that. That's just my opinion on it. Okay. I felt like the video idea was a good solution, but then all the parents complained, so. Hmm. so maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> oh, opinions. 
That's just my opinion. I feel <laughs> it. I agree with Antonio that a giant gathering of stuff, even if we are practicing social distancing and stuff, might be a bad idea. Okay. All right. Those those are our opinions. Well, thank you, and I'm really sure that the committee is thinking about that and how to mitigate any kind of or as much risk as possible. No, I'm fine with whatever they end up doing. I'm willing to help them in any way they need. So, great. I know that. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. No problem. All right. All right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> Thanks, care. Patrick. Thank you, Antonio. Thanks, Patrick and Antonio. Peace out. No problem. Peace out. Okay, okay so I'm going to move us on <laughs> to the consent agenda. Um, and would, there were some changes. I would move to add Kelly Wong to nominations as school psychologist for the middle school high school. And also another nomination, John LeClaire, the facilities manager. And under resignations, I'm afraid we have to add Colleen McIntyre, high school Spanish teacher. Okay. And I'd also like to pull off the uh, May 4th public. May 4th public. All right, just public, yes? Yes. Okay. Any other changes to the consent? I'll make the motion to approve consent is modified. Second. Okay. Um, Thank you, Charlie. Thank Patty. you, Patty. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question. Yeah. There's an item on here called sick day buyback, Mr. Foot, but there's no information about it. So. We had received information, but it's not. We did. It didn't link to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we discussed. Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. No questions. I'm good. Okay. All right. So um, we have a motion uh, to modify the consent agenda by adding. Uh, John LeClaire, facilities manager, Kelly Wong is the school psychologist for middle school, high school, and the resignation of Colleen McIntyre's high school Spanish, and to pull the May 4th public meeting minutes. Uh, thank you, Charlie and Patty. Um, so, all those in favor? John? Aye. Thank you. Laurel? Aye. Thank you, Patty. Aye. Thank you, Alicia. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. Aye. Thank you, Charlie. Yes. And I also say aye. So uh, passes seven zero zero. And now we need to deal with May fourth public. Yes. On the. Where am I at? The, uh, okay. I'm trying to find it. Page two. Page two, uh, down to the bottom, where it says, uh, uh, Laurel McKenzie said that there was areas of the public meeting minutes that she could have, that could have more detail. She something. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. Page two. Ah. Something was left out. Yes. Oh, yeah, there was, yeah, something got deleted. I'll, uh, I'll add that in. Can you read it to us? Read what to us? What, it, what should be there? I, I don't have it with me right this second. I could certainly pull my, my notes if you wanted to. It'd be, hard, I, I, it'd be hard to approve it without knowing what it's going to say. Okay, well, we can always put <laughs> so it on the next one. Why don't we put note. that on the next one? That's fine. Okay. All right. So that takes care of the con 
Sorry, Charlie, what? I said that's all I have for my four. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right, so we're um, moving on to the discussion for this evening. It's about summertime teaching and support staffing. Yeah, so the discussion is really about the um, several years ago, prior to me arriving here in the district, um, also, also prior to, I think, um, I mean, may, maybe even prior to Carrie coming into the district as well, because we was talking over with Carrie about the, the history of all of this, but definitely back when we had a different um, finance manager, uh, a, a chart was put into place, we believe that with the board's approval, a chart was put into place that uh, specified different rates for different types of work. And the rate of $29 per hour for summer um, work by teachers, now this is not curriculum work because that's uh, spelled out differently in the um, JREA school board negotiated contract, but specifically for teaching like PEP camp, um, BEST camp, uh, formerly known as Quest, the that teachers would be paid 29 an hour. Uh, so, uh, at the same time, for associates, that's instructional associates, that they would be paid $15 an hour. Now, back when these put, were put into place, $15 an hour is really kind of in the middle of the uh, salary scale for the associates, and uh, $29 an hour was probably pretty close to the base pay per hour for the contract. Uh, those things have changed a little bit, certainly in the last uh, eight years. Uh, it has been staying that way for, it has remained that way for quite some time. Uh, we have had in the past, I would say year, and even I'm sure this year, um, some difficulty finding some individuals to um, you know, do some of these positions. Uh, we have had to reach out to out of district people to come on in sometimes. Uh, so my request is that we do a modest increase. Uh, it doesn't get us necessarily in the higher end of things, but I think that, uh, you know, Jen Horn had shared some data with me that we were a little bit on the lower end in one of the groups, I think with the teachers, uh, and not, not that other schools aren't in a similar spot, but that the kind of middle range was in that 30 to $35 range. And so, I was hoping that we could raise it to $32 an hour from $29 an hour. Likewise, keeping kind of the same ratio, um, you know, $15 to 29 an hour, uh, keeping that same or something very close to that was to raise the associates as well to, I believe, $16.50 uh, an hour, uh, which is still, you know, it's on the, a little bit before the middle of their contract, but that $16.50 to $32 um, is a similar ratio to the $15 to $29. And rather than raising one, for instance, uh, if we were to raise it up like $5, for instance, for teachers, uh, you know, knowing that we have you know, limited funds and that we need to do things not necessarily abruptly, but to kind of look at that, implement it for this year as it's coming up, and then assess later on if we need to do something differently in the future. It's, uh, I don't think it's a, an act that would hurt us financially within our budget. Um, a matter of fact, uh, with a different approach to doing PEP this year, with it being more remote, I, I think we can do it within the budget that we have. Best Camp, we're still working on that, so how that will look, uh, you know, we'll have to find out. But regardless, you know, Noting that that the market has changed over the past five to eight years, um, just a little bit would be would be asked for and would be a, would be great if we could do that. Okay, so I'm because I don't have visuals tonight. Um, I'm just going to check in with each one of you for questions, uh, comments, that kind of thing, discussion. So I'm going to start with Charlie. Do you have any questions or comments or thoughts right now about what Ruben's just? Yeah, what's the difference? Bottom line, what's the difference? 
Because I've, I've got one proposal here for thirty-four dollars an hour. I've got one line at, at twenty-nine. I got a seventeen-page survey, and as I as I go through all of this stuff, I guess the bottom line for me is if you increase the uh, teacher by three dollars per hour, what's that total for the year? Well, it's for, first of all for the summertime, um, and you know is when it would typically be so it wouldn't impact the right but i mean it's in the next year's budget between july yeah and, uh, i think that year. the the information that you have that was from uh, one of the principals was showing that even within the current budget that is is there a um the proposal that she you know was asking for uh we could we would stay within budget that we're not in harm of um of going over budget in that area regardless and i'm not asking for an increase of five dollars an hour i'm asking for a three so then uh, if yes. that's, what's that uh, oh do you mean the, the difference between like two dollar like what's the difference between like 34 an hour and 32 an hour no 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 how many hours Just are we talking about potentially how many hours how much okay. how much of an add to the budget is this there is there is no add to the budget to do this for this coming year because things are done differently that is that is what i am told well so we have one worksheet from the elementary grades another from the high school using different rates yep they pro they provided different uh thoughts but they don't really they, they say how much they think it's going to cost but i don't see where they provide what the current budget is for us to make an assessment mm -hmm. so, so it would be helpful for me to know how many hours we're going to do at 29 how many hours we're going to do at uh, 32 all right and what's the difference because that's our that's our only exposure our exposure isn't the, the current budget the incremental piece of that looks like about 10 percent so, so we're not going to be going over about uh, over uh, expending more than i don't want to say we're only going to be expending 10 percent more than we would normally expend per person yes that's correct and i just wanted to know what the total was and then my i have a question about service so there's a lot of detail about number of hours and when it would happen. A few questions about enrichment, but um, we seem to be open. But how does this compare with what we usually provide in terms of contact hours or whatever you want to call it during the summer programs? So uh, the well, the, con the the time is different. You know, there will be fewer contact hours in a remote model than in the person to person model. So, uh, you know, it, it would look very different. Um, I would, uh, you know, quite, quite a bit so. So for, for ESY, for example, what do we usually offer? We offer four weeks, um, usually half days. And sometimes we've offered also for them, those, those students who are in ESY, which is a, a select group of individuals who kind of go through some, um, some meetings to determine whether they, are, they qualify for that, that they also join PEP, PEP as well. And so they get a little bit more than that uh, if parents want that. Okay, um, and, and PEP camp duration is usually how long? Uh, well, it's, I think it's uh, about five hours is my understanding. I think it's 20, I think totally they would spend about 15 to 20 hours a week, typically. For, for how many weeks? Four. Okay. Also four, okay. Yeah, ESY and PEP and I mean, though perhaps sometimes a little bit different time frames, uh, Best Camp as well, very similar time frames uh, for duration. They're all pretty much the month of July, right? Starting right after the 4th? Right after the 4th, yeah. Like the week of the 6th, I believe it is. 6th is a Monday. And I think best is usually three days a week, Tuesday through Thursday. So you're not talking a lot of work days. 
Well, best camp will be, yeah, except for when they begin, they usually start a day earlier. Yeah, so there's, a, there's another day or two in, in there. But, yeah, you're right. It's The bulk of it is Tuesday through Thursday. And same thing for PEP and ESY. And how many teachers are we talking all together, Ruben, between the three camps? You know, uh, over 10. Okay. Oh, and this year we won't need, I, you know, part of this is that with remote instruction, we also don't need nurses for PEP. So uh, if we do the best, we are looking into uh, an option to keep best going. Um, we're waiting for information from the governor to find out what camps, for instance, day camps can, can do. Uh, certainly anything before that July timeframe is, is not gonna happen anyway. And, um, and if we do do, you know, go that route and, and do something that's live, uh, we would also need to see how that would impact um, how many teachers we can get. All right. Um, and then I mean, there, there are other, uh, and the information we were given, there were other items like procurement of software that has to be done. Um, discusses using interventional software that has to be procured? Yeah, so Jen Horn is looking into, she's done some research on some online uh, supports that we can uh, utilize with actually all of our students during this time, whether they come to the school or connect with people, um, you know, more formally, that uh, with Moby Max, it's, it's the, it, it has all subjects actually, but testing in math, literacy, and some science. And it's a popular tool. Uh, a lot of schools utilize it. We have not to this point, uh, at least not much. And so uh, she has the funds within her IDEA funds to be able to provide that for the district for a year. Try it out. We don't have to stay with it if we don't want to, but it certainly helps with the remote side of things. And this what is was it called? Moby Max, M O B Y, M A X. Okay. And this is this is running Jeffrey Grade School and Ridge Memorial School as separate entities, not merging. Uh, the, uh, separate entities, as in the the software program, or are you talk about the tutoring. The pep, yes, the, the pep, pep camp. Yeah, I mean, if we can have Ringe teachers working with Ringe students, that's what we would do. And the same thing with Jaffrey with. With that but obviously we have to be able to um we, we work with whatever teachers sign up Te i mean it's it's tough to say they're separate when they're all remote you know it's not like they're at the sites what's going on is coordinated separately it's like it's coming out of, well yeah you, you have an you have a ringe budget and you have a jaffrey budget so yes so it's split up that way. And ESY is split up with the, with the student services budget. So Patty or Alicia or Heidi, do you have any questions uh, or comments or thoughts? I think an increase is a good idea. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I agree. I think eight years is a long time for mm -hmm. that. I, uh, I, I also, I have no issue with an increase, but I wonder if we shouldn't peg it to the salary schedule so we don't have to continuous, you know, come back and visit it again. That's a great idea, Laurel. Is that something we just do it's does, that does not need like a separate negotiation or anything we're not talking about making it part of the contract just using the salary as a guide the the, the steps and stuff right so if you if you took the base rate uh, divided by 186 days is that right and then by seven and a half hours am i doing that right ribbon yes Uh, that's 30, 43. Is seven and a half hours right or is 
Eight hours. It's 7.5. Um, and okay. If we peg it to, I mean, we could peg it to a step, base pay step three, or whatever gets us closest to the 32. And since the steps change every year, it would automatically change every year. And does that work with both? We, or we would just figure out a way to make it work. We'd, we'd have to look at the other scale to see how that would, right. would work. If, if we went with that process. Yep. So I mean, that's, uh, a that's a logical process and like you wouldn't have to deal with it again. Right. In, in theory. I'd just like to uh, add that having worked with the teachers at Best Camp over the past nine years, um, there's a couple of things I'd note that these teachers like our regular school year teachers uh, put in a lot more hours, I presume, than the seven and a half that they're actually on site. Or in the case of this ESY, it sounds like they'll be perhaps paid for even less than seven and a half, if I'm understanding uh, what's being proposed. <clears throat> if you had a, uh, if you go on, I, I guess I'm in favor of having administration has the flexibility to propose a rate from time to time. Uh, okay. It, it just seems like these rates for, for a teacher earning $60,000 a year, for example, working during the summer, instead of earning $46 an hour at seven and a half hours, they'd be earning, you know, 30 or 32. Um, and perhaps that's fine, but I, I, I just think we should be conscious that uh, we're not talking about a large number of days and uh, I think it might be useful to have administration have some flexibility to make sure that we're competitive. All right, any other thoughts or comments right now? Okay, so Ruben, I have a yeah. question for you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is under discussion yeah. Um, when do you need action? Well, I think that if, um, well, sir, first of all, what I've heard tonight, uh, I'll, uh, two things. One, there's some questions for more information. So mm -hmm. I can get that. Um, I don't think that we should make a final vote on a number until that information has been received and people have all the questions answered that they want. So I have some work to do. I'll probably end up following up just to kind of get some clarification so that I'm understanding everything properly. Uh, the certainly our, our next board meeting is June, uh, June 1st. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, certainly I'd like to have action by then. What I would want to say though is um, when people are, you know, signing up, if, if we could communicate that to them that we're in the discussions and that uh, the board is speaking favorably for there to be an increase, that would be nice. All right, I think that I haven't heard anyone say it's a terrible idea. It's just a question of what's it gonna cost and, and how do we gauge it and that kind of stuff. So it's details. Yep. So if we can have those details worked out and it'll mm -hmm. be on the June 1st for an action item, that'd be great. Yep. All right. Anyone final thoughts before we move on? One, uh, just one last question. Ruben, do you know how many students participated in PEP last year? I don't have that number right offhand. Um, I know that this year they were looking at fewer individuals. I think that my understanding is that there were uh, I don't want to I don't want to give a number uh, and be wrong but I was thinking be around 75 between the two schools um, last year and, and that might not count with ESY so I'd have to I'd have to get those numbers for you that's a good question I know that last year best camp was 90 almost it was 88 90 and that was the highest that they've had this year right now with um, and 
speaking with Tanya, they have about 50, 50 to 60, but, but closer to that 50 mark, I think. Um, and that would, that actually suits any sort of program that we'd be considering to do anyway. Um, it would get harder and harder to have larger numbers, but we are looking at something to be a, a little more robust than typical uh, for this type of an environment. And we do think we have that figured out, but we're, we're still in conversations with um, an organization. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks. All right. Um, so policy review, second reading. And Alicia, are you going to speak to this? Um, so it's the second reading. I'm not sure if anyone has any additional additional questions. So, John, do you have anything? No, I've looked them over again. They look they look good. They, I mean, these are no no questions. Pretty simple. Um, no. Laurel, I move we accept the policy changes as proposed. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, Charlie. So Laurel moves that we accept the policies as they are stated, and Charlie is second that. I'll do a roll call vote. Um, John? Aye. Laurel? Aye. Patty? Aye. Alicia? Yes. Heidi? Aye. Charlie? Yes. And I say aye as well. So those are accepted. Seven zero zero. Well done. <laughs> okay. So um and the wellness. You. Oh, thank you to the policy committee. I know how grueling a process it is. Actually it's been going really well. We're really <laughs> staying caught up and it's a good feeling. Awesome. Thank you a moment. <laughs> right. Okay, so under um, the board, bleh, the board committees, we have three committees we're going to hear from tonight. So the first one is the wellness committee. Heidi. Yes. So as I mentioned at the last um, school board meeting, in lieu of trying to do some kind of wellness week, we decided to just put together a list of resources, and Nick distributed um, the link to the SAU. Uh, site last Monday, I believe it was, um, where people can find ideas for inspiration around five different areas that we, you know, thought would be great topics. So mind, body, soul, inspiration, and community. The idea is to continue to update this page um, in the future. And as you can see there, there's the wellness survey button. So anybody who would like to share additional resources or ideas or anyone who would like to ask a question um, they can do so through that button and we just hope it's a, a, a positive place for people to you know take a look at and maybe find some inspiring um, things oh nice and and different websites that are um, interesting and then I would just like to say we're always the the committees would be happy to have more parent and student participation um so if there's anyone listening who would like to join this committee i believe our next meeting is at the end of august so nick would it be fine to just have someone contact you if they're interested and then we could you could get that to the committee. could they go on that button and click and write it in yeah, yeah they, they could do that as well probably so yeah, they could click this and uh currently um all of these uh you know answers are directed to heather lindstad activities director um and then you know, she can kind of funnel them out you know according to we, we already have a couple uh, additions to the website um already that i'll uh, work on probably putting up tomorrow so uh there is a last updated you know line there so just be sure to you know check in every once in a while and see if there's been some updates great great that's it that's great thanks any uh, questions for Heidi? The committee did a good job. It's a fun idea, I think, and certainly something that um, I think we all 
need something positive to, to think about these days. So we'll keep it as, an, as a work in progress and um, look forward to the next school year where we can just plan more good activities, group activities for um, physical fitness and wellness. Great. All right. Anyone else thoughts or comments for Heidi before we move on? Well, just from a wellness, I'm not part of the wellness committee, but uh, certainly I'm working with people who are um, on that wellness committee and, and really doing some great work. Um, today, I spent a good hour with someone uh, relative to, uh, with Heather actually about the facility uh, with the new uh, exercise slash weight room that's being put together in the middle school, high school. I'm excited about that. That'll be fun to share out once that's done. Getting quotes and everything, is, it's, it's really coming along nicely. Uh, the planning of it anyway. And, uh, and the, the also, we are in the process of interviewing and uh, wellness teachers for the middle school. So that's, that's still in session. Hopefully June 1st, we'll be able to make some decisions. Great, thanks. Okay, so the next one is the Education Committee. And the Education Committee has not met, but we do have um, a date. Mm -hmm. So the Education Committee is going to start meeting the second Monday of each month. So that makes, um, what's the next date? So it'll be June, June 8th. 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 Yep. June 8th is when the next meeting will be. The elementary principals are going to be presenting. I might, uh, now at this point, I might be able to get the uh, secondary as well, but the elementary principals are going to be giving an update on remote learning, how it went, you know, what they saw as, as um, things that went well, things that, that needed to be improved. But by that time, actually, they'll have had a time of reflection with their staff. And so I would imagine that will be added to that. Certainly, we'll have an update during that time frame on the learning management system and where that whole, whole uh, search is going, as well as uh, other areas of the curriculum instruction assessment team and the work that they have ahead for the summertime and for the upcoming school year. All right. Can board members be spectators? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so education committee folks, will it need to do some emailing just so we can nail the time that works for people? Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one is the school board goals, which we, I, yeah, we recepted a report, but let's just, Patty, if you would. Sure. Um, so we uh, met uh, in April and um, we approved this today, I guess. Um, we'll meet again June 23rd at 3 p.m. Um, a number of, it's, these are actively moving targets. Um, so this is a guide for us as, um, as we go through the year and some of the updates have um, changed even since April. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, um, and then, you know, in June, we also do our board self-assessment. So we're going to be reviewing, you know, how um, everything went overall for the year. Um, I think one of the things we'll have to assess next year is probably how this whole entire remote learning experience impacted many of these goal, yeah. overarching goal areas. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the ones particularly as it relates to curriculum, uh, instruction, uh, student performance, those types of things. Um, but um, not, not in a punitive way, but in a open-minded, what can we learn from this experience kind of way. Um, and I'm sure there's a terrific list of things that the teachers and administration have um, flagged as things that they would do again and things they would do differently. Um, so that around student achievement, I would, I would think that we'd be making some um, 
keeping things and adding some things, um, inter including assessment from the spring. Um, sorry, going back, I'm not going to go through this blow by blow, but the um, on the safety, we hired a safety off, um, coordinator. And um, so that, again, we made some progress even after the goals were assessed. Um, Good. You know, there's some that are beyond our control, like the student assessments, mm -hmm. um, you know, and other things that, for example, uh, uh, increased focus on early education was a broad goal. It's one thing to say that it's completed and achieved, but then what next? You know, you, it's not that we're just going to check off the box and walk away from those kiddos. So how do we, you know, how do you, how do you balance all the needs of, you know, young, young children, um, you know, to the, to the 12th grader. So. Right. Um, we did, we did feel very strongly that the um, goal three on fiscal responsibility was accomplished. And uh, while we're always looking at things like capital expenditure plans and future planning, um, we did there, the district delivered a budget to the voters and that was, um, a pos positive process. So, um, the shortest deliberative session ever. Well, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, <laughs> it's better. Um, and, and I think, you know, we talked a little bit at the last meeting about how we're, we need to work on some of these goals, um, not just it, how we set goals, who carries them out, who tracks them. Um, you know, is it possible to have the education committee tackle and, and stay current with the curriculum goal so that we know, you know, as a board, we have some feedback throughout the, the, the quarter. Um, so there's just, some of us are just not going to be able to let that go. Um, yep. So, so I would say that one goal that was achieved this year that is terrific is the way the policies are now presented on the web website and that they're searchable. Yeah, we it's terrific. Yeah. Nick did a terrific job and um, it's, it's, um, that's actually a fun committee to be on because we've really worked hard to make it efficient. It's true. Mm -hmm. Don't laugh. No, I'm um, just saying that's how often do you hear something like that? It's such a fun committee to be on well, policy. We, <laughs> we have, have a lot of fun. We have the right people at the table. And there you go. I think the, um, you know, we even have, you know, this awesome spreadsheet and Nick's going to even take that to an all new level. And yeah. Um, it really does. It's it's not as hard. It, it's, <laughs> I highly recommend using Zoom for, for that kind of a review. Um, Charlie and John, do you have other comments you'd like to make about this review process in this committee at this time? I'd just like to say that I think you've done a great job and uh, I'm looking forward to you continuing in this role for a long time. <laughs> you, you can't see my face, but I'm shaking my head. <laughs> and and uh, I also want to say, um, yes, you, you've done an, a, a great job and that it feels like, you know, we are making some progress and uh, it's reflected in, in uh, what we see here in the goals. And as you say, even, even since we did this in April, some things, uh, you know, we've come further, so. The only okay. comment I would say relative to these goals um, was that, uh, I mean, we can, I can talk about a lot of them and I won't, um, but 1.2 or 1.2a was up there for a little bit of time. And that's a communication goal. Um, that's part of what, you know, Nick has really been spearheading um, you know, which ties with the policies online and so forth. And so the next thing that we're doing, and it's, it's taken some time with all this remote learning, we were supposed to really meet in the month of April, but uh, I can see that there are some people here tonight in, that are on the communication committee. And so I'll be sending out a doodle poll to meet in uh, early June um, to be able to uh, look at website 
app and communication bundles and that that information nick is has the uh, is putting together a, you know basically a package of information for all these these companies and so forth he already has the quotes um to give out to these individuals ahead of time um but we we hope to make a decision within the month of june on how to move forward and we're excited about that so as much work as i think we've done uh with a website and with communication i think it's going to be at least from a, a foundational standpoint, drastically improved even come next year. All right. Okay. Well, thank you to all the committees. And if there's no other questions, let's move on to public comments. Number two. Um, so yeah, I only have, I guess I'll explain the process again real quick. Um, do have one comment. So again, three ways to uh, put in your public comment. You can uh, text 603-933-0973. could send a uh, chat or you could use the participant window to raise your hand. In any case, please uh, use your name uh, and also uh, your um, town of residence just so we can uh, include that in the minutes. Um, we do have one comment right now in chat. Uh, but we need a name in town. Yeah, I'm going to ask uh, Coral, I believe it's, is it Coral Gallagher? Could you uh, confirm that for me, please? Um, so while we're uh, so yeah, it's, it's Coral Gallagher um, from Jaffrey. Um, so she says, I think that when Ruben was giving the graduation update, he mentioned that it would be scheduled in July. Curious about this because last we knew the goal was still still hold graduation in June. Yeah, so if I said July, that was wrong. Um, that's the misstep. The idea was to hold it in June. Um, I don't have the final detail yet to say specifically. Uh, certainly we on our calendar that's, that was adopted by the board was that it would be the 12th. Uh, I believe it was, and I th still think that uh, we're looking at that time frame. But I need to talk to the principal, uh, kind of uh, more than just through uh, online communication, to make sure that all the details are set. But I know that he plans on sending communication out, hopefully tomorrow um, or the next day. So this week, it will be put out there. Certainly, anything we do, it's going to have to be outside. And we're going to have to have a rain date for that. But you're right, June is the target, not July. All right. Any others come in in the last minute? Well, let me just check all three uh, methods. I got nothing. All righty. OK, thank you. Um, on to board matters. I have something. Okay, Patty. So um, I last year um, the board participated in an activity for seniors called Sapling Send Off. Um, the board wanted to show its appreciation and um, awesome job to the seniors as they graduated. And so, um, if uh, if it sounds like we're going to be trying to do something with some social distancing, but in person, um, we'd like to renew um, an effort to really express our, uh, you know, just everything. <laughs> it's hard to put it into a gift or an item but, or a thing, but a tree really um, to set roots um, wherever they are um, and wherever they'll go. So um, that's something we'd like to do going forward. Right. and. Patty, could you just remind us last year the the approximate cost of that? Um, you know, I think it was between three and four hundred dollars. I think um, you know, there's the saplings themselves, which we got from the Arbor Day Foundation. So that's a mm -hmm. really good thing. And then we just had some materials for a lap and um, ribbon and car stock. Right. So. Right. Okay. Um, so. Uh, I just want to check in with the other board members. Is this something that sounds good? Uh, want to continue that tradition, John? Uh, yes, I think we should continue that tradition and I'd like to ask Ruben if he can find the money for that in uh, the current year's budget. 
All right. Um, thanks for that. Uh, Laurel, I'm assuming you're, you're going with the plants. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no um, go on. What? And, and participate in the bag operation. <laughs> the bagging of the plants. Okay. Uh, Alicia. Team building exercise. Yeah, there we go. Definitely. Uh huh. Okay. And Heidi and Charlie. Yes. Yes. All right. I, I think it was great too. So, uh, Ruben, your charge. Great. See if, see if we can find some money so we can continue this. And uh, Patty, you were going to uh, dig a little deeper and um, find out where? Yes. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other board matters? I have a couple things if no one else does. One is um, the school board calendar. I believe we need to be putting that together. So I, I'm making an assumption here, but if someone who's uh, experienced it in the past can help clarify it. Um, I'm assuming that that's like Ruben and I can sit down and put together a proposal and bring that to the board. The meeting yeah. calendar? Yeah. I think yeah. That, yeah, I think that Carrie had to add in all the budget stuff as well. Sorry, and you, you went think, funny. I think that Carrie had to add in the budget dates. Okay. So, based, based on the um, uh, state calendar for next year. Okay. Would I be allowed to speak to that at all? Nick, sure. Yeah. Um, so I came aboard last year in June, and that was one of the first things that I had worked on um, in terms of at least preparing the, this is what the calendar was last year, translating the dates over. Um, so I'm happy to coordinate with Carrie on, you know, revamping what, la you know, the previous years into what next year would be. Uh, a lot of those dates that Carrie has, at least at this point, are usually tentative, but I'll see if she has any idea as to what those dates might be. Um, and then if there was any sort of alternative proposal that wanted to go through, uh, Marcia, you and Ruben could, you know, take lead on that and I'm happy to assist in whatever way. Okay. Uh, Nick, most of those dates are, uh, established by RSA mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, how many days after the start of the month and so forth. So it should be relatively easy to put together the, at least the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. but, but to Marcia's point, it's absolutely essential because you, I don't know how you can schedule a, uh, a education meeting for the second uh, Monday of the month when you may have to have a board meeting on that Monday based on a holiday for the first Monday of the month. So I think it's essential okay. that we the calendar done. All right. Great. Well, well, then we better get that done ASAP. So the other thing that I was um, wanted to bring up is in um, Ruben's, I believe it was in your written uh, report, there was um, some conversation about um, a retreat, possibly. For yeah, the no, board you, you and administration, mm -hmm. and and John, you brought it up that you know things that we could work on um, might be some of the stuff that we talked about tonight that we we just need more time with. So I don't know if um, I mean it would be really great if we could figure out face to face, but I don't know. Um, so maybe that's something, again, Ruben, we can look at what our guidelines and then also what might be some items and we can survey the board and administration and get some of that going. Yeah, dates, venue, uh, topic. <laughs> Masks, yeah. <laughs> it, it's really exciting to hear uh, some of what we heard tonight. I know, Ruben, it was just a brief outline that you provided, but um, 
you know, we've been talking about a strategic design for years now, and we've made some steps, uh, you know, fits and starts, but uh, hearing that we're moving towards the learning management system and that uh, there's plans to convert our strategic design into a strategic plan is really exciting. And uh, you, uh, well, one of the one of the elements of as we kind of looked at other schools as to what their um, communication strategy for a plan would be, because a plan is different than a design. We have a 29, 26 to 29 page document that's very philosophical, has a lot of details and so forth. So the curriculum instruction assessment team, one of the things that they're going to be doing is taking that and uh, summarizing it into a one pager. Now that might be one page, one side or one page, you know, front and back with some graphics to be able to uh, put within that plan. So it's kind of an abridged version. Uh, simultaneously, what we are doing is Leslie McLean, who's uh, my new uh, administrative assistant, uh, she is working on the district data dashboard, putting that together, getting all the information together. We've looked at New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, schools in the area, although I, I will say that some of the other states have much better um, approaches to, to data reporting data uh, so we're putting together something that makes sense for us uh, we'll have a draft hopefully you know within this next month to be able to kind of present that might even be we might even have the draft by the curriculum committee we don't know um, but we're working on that pretty religiously so that we can uh, and as to what data we're going to collect what we're going to be reporting and that's going to be crucial for that plan we need to have that because um, we need to have that baseline and we can even use baseline information from other things because we've I mean from other years we don't have to just say this is the baseline uh, we've made progress in certain areas so we can utilize that too but looking at academic um, social data uh, attendance all of that sort of thing good you know it's great to know we're working on curriculum instruction and assessment uh, I must say that I'm a little concerned about the acronym CIA uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just e it's easier to write a curriculum instruction and assessment. Those are all big words. <laughs> and so when I'm typing, it's easier to put CIA in there. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. And any other board matters? Okay. Um, so future items. Um, one of them is the returning to school. Uh, for the 2021 school year and you know what lies ahead. Um, I just want to say that I know Ruben and I have had some conversation about this and also um, Heidi I think you and I talked a little bit around that in terms of uh, that what the state is doing. Um, I guess in hearing you know, what we heard tonight and also leading up to tonight, um, the state's making broad statements, but there's no plan. And I'm just um, wondering if maybe we need to have like an ad hoc committee that actually kind of keeps tabs on what the task force at the state is doing, but also can be thinking based on you know, the debrief that we get from teachers and administrators um, on those last couple days of school, um, using that kind of information, you know, lessons learned there, plus you know, just kind of make our plan, start to make a plan so that we've got maybe an A plan, a B plan, depending on what happens. I, I think it would be a great idea the task I listened in on the first task force meeting uh, their goal is to have guide uh, recommendations to the governor by the end of June but that's a heavy lift yeah there's there's a number of people who've talked about the fact that there were plans that were expected to come out already for summer and for special education supports for the summer and those haven't it's you know we're, we're, this is the middle of may but it's not really the middle of may right it could be easily next week yes so it's i think having scenarios i like to call them scenarios rather than plans because that's good. scenarios give us 
some um, breadth of um, if then what. Um, but I think it's it's fair to say that um, a lot of time is is spent on these scenarios that in some ways can be wasted or can be developmental. I think it's you know from my experiences spring in healthcare, it's it can be vastly improve one plan can or scenario can um, edit, ed, educate yourself on another one. So um, I, I like that idea, Marcia. I think it's really important for us to um, kind of remind us, ourselves to be where we're at and not to think too far ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we can borrow trouble easily um, for our parents and for the teachers and for the kids um, making you know, jumping to judgments too soon um, on if they do this, what do we do? If they do that, what do we do? I think we mm -hmm. need a really level-headed group of people who mm -hmm. can um, think rationally through a few scenarios. Yeah. So I guess um, then with the board's permission, we'd like to start to form um, a committee and I guess if people who are on the board or in the community who may be interested could express an interest and then we can choose people that I, I would love us to target a few people who have have worked worked in, in that area <laughs> well I, I, nobody's really worked in this area well, but okay. it's, it's so hard to, you know people who have uh, addressed you know um, crisis, you know, in, in a lot of ways, redefining and 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 um, looking at things in a different way. Uh, it not mm -hmm. just, or, you know, yeah. So, I guess if the board has some thoughts around that, um and ideas of people who would be good for this. If we can um, let Ruben know, or myself. Okay. And with a target of a start date in what? Third week in June or? I think it's gotta be right after the, the once school is complete. So yeah, towards the end of June, I think is when we're looking. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on that? Okay. I, I would just say that it's, uh, I think, good that you're uh, addressing it or that we're addressing it. Yeah. Th Try to be proactive. Point. Yeah, you know, th there's... <clears throat> I think all of us want to be cautious and we need to be cautious, but at the same time, we need to be thoughtful and learn what best practices are and using those best practices, you know, th thoughtfully and comprehensively, we can assure good education and safety, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be the goal. Okay, thanks. Um, the next future item, risk management report, that'll be at the next meeting. Um, Ruben, I don't know if there's anything you have to say on that or that's enough. It's, it's, a, it's an annual event. Okay. Um, the other is um, June 15th, we're gonna have a, a presentation around social emotional um, data from the high school, middle school, and things that will be included in that is also information around compass and assist programs. So Good. Great. that's coming. All right. So if there's nothing else for tonight, I'm open for a motion. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. Alicia and Laurel, thank you very much for that. All those in favor? 
Hi. John, Hi. Laurel, Hi. Patty, Hi. Alicia, Heidi, Charlie, Hi. all together. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Great. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good one.